Good morning and welcome to another edition of 100 Days of Devotion. This morning, before we get into the Word, please pray with me for a minute. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for today, for the beautiful day that you have made and the privilege that it's ours to rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, I pray that by the teaching of your Word this morning, you will transform our lives and renew our minds. I pray that our lives will never be the same again. Thank you, Lord, because today's teaching is much more than just information. It is an activation in our spirits. It is the capacity of the Holy Spirit within us to act and to do the Lord's will. Lord, I pray that when we hear the word this morning, we will not harden our hearts, but that we will absorb the word as seed falling on fertile ground. And Lord, we will bear fruit, much fruit and abiding fruit, fruit that comes from your word and fruit that transforms us into the expression of your word. Lord, I pray that you grant me utterance this morning to share your word and that every mind that listens will receive the word with simplicity and with meekness. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. This morning, I'll be speaking about effective prayer. Of course, we cannot talk enough about prayer because prayer is the bedrock of our Christianity. And I'd just like to talk about the qualities of effective prayer. First and foremost, I'd like you to turn your Bibles with me to the book of Luke, chapter 11. And I'm going to read from verse 1 to 13. The Bible says, Now it came to pass, as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. So he said to them, When you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day by day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And he said to them, Which of you shall have a friend? And go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine has come to me on his journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within and say, Do not trouble me. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give to you. I say to you, Though he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend, Yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. Verse 9. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives, and he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, Will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Beautiful portion of scripture. I'm very keen on details when I study the Bible. The disciples had been praying before now. They did not just say, teach us how to pray. They said, teach us to pray. And I've read that in several Bible translations. And I believe that was very intentional. Because Jesus wasn't giving them a prayer to repeat. He was letting them know that prayer is a relationship between lovers. One so deep that even if one partner were unwilling to respond, the boldness of the other the consistency of the other, the persistence of the other would count for something. He was showing prayer as a relationship. In other words, they were not just saying, teach us how to pray, give us a model of prayer. They were asking to be taught to pray. Give us the spirit of prayer, the attitude of prayer, the desire to pray and the knowledge of it thereof. So these people wanted to understand prayer from Jesus' perspective. And he went right ahead to show them that this is a lover's relationship. He said, if you go to your friend at midnight and ask for loaves, 
Will he tell you the door is already locked? I'm in bed with my children. He said, yet for your persistence, he will give it to you. Some other Bible translations say, for his name's sake, for his reputation, he will give it to you. So two things happen there. Jesus is showing them the spirit of prayer and Jesus is also showing them a model that has the qualities of a beautiful prayer. Jesus is showing his disciples what effective prayer looks like. Now, when something is said to be effective, it means it is successful in producing a desired or intended result. Therefore, effective prayer is a prayer that succeeds to produce a desired or an intended result. What then is prayer? The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17, pray without ceasing. And every time I read that portion of scripture, I ask myself, is the Lord asking us to go ahead speaking the entire time without ceasing? What is he talking about? Is he talking about praying in the morning and in the evening? Is he talking about praying all day? Is he saying that we should just spend the entire day praying? Of course, there are multiple sides and multiple faces to this truth because the Bible is called the manifold wisdom of God, the wisdom of many sides, of many faces. However, I'd like to define prayer as the exchange of intimate thoughts, feelings, and words with God in which we know, declare, enforce, and establish his will on earth as it is in heaven. So it's a time when there's an exchange of deep thoughts, intimate thoughts, intimate feelings, intimate words, and even actions in certain circumstances with God. It's a time of communion, deep fellowship. So prayer is not just that we share words. It is that we exchange intimate thoughts. In other words, we exchange our thoughts with His. We bring our thoughts to Him and we receive his thoughts for us. We bring our feelings to him and he declares his feelings to us. We bring our words to him. Of course, the expression of prayer is largely done in words. So we bring our words to him. We bring all of these thoughts, feelings, and actions and we cloth them with words. We package them in words and we bring them to him. In that process, we know his will. In other words, we become aware of it. We are reminded of it or it is revealed to us. Secondly, we declare his will. In other words, we summon by decree. We can pronounce his will forth. Next, we enforce his will in faith and warfare. For example, Jesus has already won the victory, but through prayer, we enforce obedience on the demons and of the devil. We enforce obedience on them. We cause them to obey through our decrees. And also prayer causes us to establish God's will on earth as it is in heaven. It causes the kingdom of heaven to have dominion over earth. And of course, I've explained this before, that heaven is not God's house. Heaven is not where God lives. Heaven is the office of operation that governs over the earth. That's why the Bible says there'll be a new heaven and a new earth because the only reason why heaven is created is because an earth had to be created so think about heaven as the presidency as the white house or the unity palace think about heaven as the throne room the bible says the heaven is your throne and the earth is your foot too so heaven is the place from which executive decrees are released that govern the earth so the earth is a reactive realm if anything has to change on earth, it has to first be changed in heaven. You see, so the kingdom of heaven known is the goal of prayer. Jesus known, Jesus having the rule over everything is the purpose of prayer. That our king is known and our king has dominion and rule over everything. So when we pray, that's the ultimate purpose. So for example, if I'm facing sickness in my life and I pray, it is because I already know the will of my father for that circumstance. The Bible says, they that dwell in Zion will not say, I am sick. The Bible also says that healing is the children's bread. So when I pray for healing, 
I'm trying to establish the reign of Jesus, the reign of our Heavenly Father in that particular situation of sickness. And for the Father to reign, it means healing will reign. So what is that circumstance that is not consistent with the person, the purpose and the plan of Jesus? When you bring prayer into it, you are causing Jesus or our Heavenly Father to be known. You are causing our King to be known in that circumstance and to have full dominion over that circumstance. That is the ultimate purpose of prayer. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So the reason why we are exchanging our intimate thoughts, feelings and words with God the reason why we know, declare, enforce, and establish His will is that it will be done on earth as it is in heaven, that His kingdom will come. And I've explained this before, that when the Bible says, Thy kingdom come, it means the king be known, the king have reign and dominion over all. Through prayer, we make our king known and we allow him to have dominion in the earth realm to have the rule over everything in the earth realm. And so, in prayer, our relationship with God is solidified because of the exchange of deep thoughts, of deep feelings, because of the expression of our hearts to Him and because of how we get to know His heart and His will. This is why we can pray without ceasing, always being in communion with God. This is why we are not afraid to pray. This is why we bring our hearts before the Lord in prayer because we want our King to be known and we want our King to have the reign, the rule and dominion in the earth realm. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So, for prayer to be effective, for prayer to actually achieve that intended result, what are the qualities of such a prayer? The first quality of effective prayer is that it is intentional effective prayer is deliberate it is planned and done on purpose it is the fruit of your desire the bible says in mark chapter 1 verse 35 very early in the morning while it was still dark jesus got up left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed jesus woke up early in the morning he was intentional about it Jesus planned his prayer time. If your prayer will actually cause the kingdom to come and the will to be done on earth as it is in heaven, you must be intentional about your prayer. Footnote, question, how can I be more intentional about prayer in this season? Number two, effective prayer is heartfelt. In other words, it is sincere and involves emotional and physical expression you put your heart into it one time i was having a conference with some women i was teaching in a women's prayer conference and i did a practicals on this when i thought about heartfelt prayer i said you know what you have to put your mind into it you have to think about every word that you are saying and mean it you know sometimes when you go to pray you find that you just open your mouth and you're saying whatever you're not thinking about what you're saying you're almost praying like a robot. You're almost praying on autopilot because prayer for you has become a religious activity. But let me tell you something. Prayer must be heartfelt. I tell people when you're praying, think about the words that you're saying. You know, sometimes when I'm starting the 100 days of, of devotion and I'm praying, some people say I, I'm praying almost the same thing. But you see, that prayer is not a repetition. It's not a planned prayer. This is the day that you have made. Lord, we will rejoice and be glad in it. That thing, when I say it in the morning, it causes my spirit to come alive. The joy of the Lord strengthens me from inside. That is why I cannot give up on my daily activities. I cannot give up on the Lord. I cannot give up on the mission that the Lord has given to me because I'm thinking about the, what I'm saying in prayer. Your emotions are invested in it. Many times it will even show in your posture. Sometimes when you put your heart in prayer, you will lift up your hands. Sometimes you will bow your knees. Sometimes you will prostrate before the Lord. This kind of prayer needs vulnerability. It is heartfelt. I'm going to read 1 Samuel chapter 1 from verse 9 to 16. The Bible says, Once when they had finished eating, 
and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah stood up. Now Eli the priest was sitting on his chair by the doorpost of the Lord's house. In her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. And she made a vow saying, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life and no razor will ever be used on his head. As she kept on praying to the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying in her heart and her lips were moving but her voice was not heard. Eli thought she was drunk and said to her, How long are you going to stay drunk? Put away your wine. Verse 15, Not so, my Lord, Hannah replied. I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I have been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. Look, when Anna was praying those prayers, asking the Lord for a son, her entire being was in her prayer. She was so invested in the prayer that the prophet thought she was drunk. Effective prayer is heartfelt. You put your soul into it. Number three, effective prayer is consistent. In other words, it will happen again and again. Haven't you read about the, the judge and the woman who came to him? Because she persisted, the Bible says, the judge let her have it. If you can persist in prayer, you will see a result. You cannot say, it doesn't matter how long you pray. It doesn't matter how many days you pray. If you pray for five minutes, it's the same as praying for 30 minutes. Do not ever let anyone tell you such a lie. You see, there is something effective about when we pray long and we pray heartfelt and intentional prayers. So it's not just that you prayed long or that you prayed many times, but you see, that has an effect on your prayer. If you come over and over and pray, I tell you, you're going to see a result. The elders of old, our fathers of faith always use the acronym PUSH. Pray until something happens. You have to learn to push. You have to learn to pray until something happens. You have to learn to pray over and over until you see the desired result. You have to learn to press in in prayer. It is more effective to pray every day than to pray once for 24 hours and the next time you come to pray is in 10 months. The Bible says again, 1 Thessalonians 5.17, pray without ceasing. Number four, effective prayer needs separation. So, Effective prayer cannot happen until we are separated from distractions. Remember in Mark chapter 1 verse 35, the Bible says very early in the morning while it was still dark, Jesus left the house and went off to a solitary place. He went to be alone. He needed separation. In Matthew chapter 6 from the verse 6 and 7, the Bible says, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Now, when many people read this verse, they keep thinking, oh, Jesus is saying that we shouldn't pray long because we will not be heard for our much speaking. Listen that has a place but you see i was going to show you verse 6 first where he said enter your closet and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly he says use not vain repetitions underline the word vain repetitions it is very important don't just say anything that comes to your mind thinking that because you are praying and crying and say do it lord do it lord do it lord do it lord there are people who will just keep praying we, when we say let us pray for the country they'll say things like do it lord do it lord do it lord listen the bible says with definite request make thy request known definite request bring words to the father bring a case especially in the prayer of intercession build a case by the word of god you see, any prayer that is not, you know, connected to the word is vain repetitions. You need to be able to stay focused and stay your mind on what you're doing. 
You need to close your eyes sometimes to avoid distractions. Sometimes you have to keep away your phone. Sometimes you have to go to a solitary place. Effective prayer needs separation. Number five, effective prayer is continuous. It must be able to go on for a long period of time without interruption. There is a time factor in prayer. It is just like preparing a meal. You see, there's a time it takes for the meal to get ready. If you start praying and you stop when you have not had a note of victory in your spirit, then you might be leaving that meal when it's not yet ready. Just like preparing a meal, there's a particular point where it gets ready. Look, there's a mechanism behind building a muscle. For example, when you go to the gym, there's a time it takes. There's an amount of lifts. You have to lift the dumbbell for that muscle to change. Do you, do you understand what I'm talking about? You have to build those muscles in prayer. When you read Matthew chapter 26 verse 40, the Bible says, Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. In other words, Jesus expected that there was a minimum required time. Can you not pray even for one hour? Effective prayer is continuous. Lastly, effective prayer is word-based. If prayer is not based on the truth of God's word, then it will not be effective. The more of the word you know, the more effective your prayer will be. You have to know what the word of God says about every situation. You have to know the will of the Lord about every situation. The Bible says in James 4 verse 3, You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. What are you asking for? Are you asking amiss? Are you praying according to God's will? Are you praying the word? Are you speaking forth the word of God in prayer? Are you asking God for things in prayer that he has already given to you? Are you asking the Lord to do things that he has already done? Are you praying amiss? You need knowledge of God to pray effectively. When your prayer is based on the truth of God's word, you will see a result all day, every day. I pray for you this morning that your prayers will be effective and they will bring forth results. I pray that you will learn to have intentional prayers. You will pray heartfelt prayers. I pray that you will be consistent in prayer, doing it again and again, building frequency. I pray that you will separate yourself for the purpose of effective prayer. I pray that your prayer will be continuous. You will be able to go for long stretches of time. And I pray that your prayer will be based on the truth of God's word. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. It was nice having you on today's meditation. Write down notes from this teaching and make plans on how you're going to change your prayer life. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. God bless you. Goodbye.